Hey guys, welcome back to Comic Gen TV where all geek culture collides. I'm Shannon and today we're going to be taking a look at the Star Trek The Next Generation portion of the deck. Star Trek 25th Anniversary 1991 Impel Trading Card Set. Stay tuned. <laughs> Alright, so as I said, this is the next generation portion of the complete uh, Star Trek 25th Anniversary Impel trading card set from 1991. And I'm not sure if I have the full set of the original series portion or not. I'm going to have to double check on that, uh, but that will be in another review. So as you can see here, the checklist, not sure if this is the full checklist or not. Star Trek Next Generation Checklist, 1991 Paramount Pictures, all rights reserved, Star Trek and related marks, are trademarks of Paramount Pictures, Impel Marketing Incorporated, authorized user, Impel 1991. To side and first things first, The Measure of a Man. Data's existence hangs in the balance when he is ordered to serve under Captain Bruce Maddox who seeks to dismantle the unique android for study. After Data refuses the order and considers resigning from Starfleet, Maddox challenges Data's refusal on the grounds that he is Starfleet property and not human. Captain Picard asks to defend Data in a hearing before a Judge Advocate General. Riker, as the next most senior officer, is forced to act as prosecutor in a dramatic courtroom demonstration. Riker switches Data off to prove that the android isn't human. Picard responds with an impassioned plea that Data is sentient with all the rights and privileges of a living being. The judge's landmark ruling not only safeguards Data's right to exist, but gives the android new status as a crew member. I won't be reading every card in this series. I do remember this episode. It is a very interesting episode. And of course does start off with number 44. Let's see if that's on the checklist here. If not, then this isn't a complete checklist. Nope. It is not on the checklist here. So that means this is only one part of the checklist. So it may not be a complete deck as I might have thought. I bought this with my 1992 Next Generation trading cards as well. Uh, they were all in a complete... Uh, next generation trading cards as well uh, they were all in a complete uh, binder in uh, protective covers so we got here contagion see wharf carrying data there believe this is the episode where <clears throat> the crew de-evolves i think i could be wrong Card number 48, The Death of Tasha Yar. Number 52, Coming of Age. Shut up, Wesley. <laughs> number 56, Time Squared. Number 78, The Prime Directive. And if you guys want to read the backs of each of these, feel free to pause it at any time and read them. That would be number 88, Deanna Troy, Counselor. Many boys, first crushes. She uh, certainly piqued my interest as a kid and an adult. <laughs> Captain Jean-Luc Picard. Commander William T. Riker. Patrick Stewart. Brent Spiner. Gates McFadden. 
I am going to have to check up Gates McFadden. I am going to have to check up, see if I have another checklist in there at all. And uh, maybe put these in proper order if they're combined with some of the other cards I have in there from the original series and so on. Q Who. I wonder what it'd be like if uh, Q got assimilated by the Borg somehow. Not that he could be, but that would be very interesting to see. Shades of Grey. It would be interesting to see how Data would interact with uh, Odo, Spock, and Seven of Nine. And uh, perhaps to Paul. Something I've always kind of wanted to see in Star Trek would be what would the offspring of a Vulcan and a Klingon be like? Be a very interesting pairing. It would probably need to be a Klingon male with a Vulcan female the bonding if this kid looks familiar that is because if you guys have seen robocop 2 this is gabriel damon who played hob from robocop 2 in 1989 he was a kid who uh kane had uh recruited to deal his drugs the nuke and uh, he ends up getting shot all to hell probably about midway through the movie and robocop finds him uh dying in a uh, storage container full of cash. Mm, booby trap. Manhunt. Majel Barrett Roddenberry played Lawaxana Troy in both Next Generation and Deep Space Nine. Uh, she initially appeared in Star Trek the original series pilot episode The Cage in 1964 uh, as Enterprise's unnamed first officer number one. She later portrayed a blonde nurse by the name of Christine Chapel, went on in the motion picture to become Dr. Chapel, which she reprised in Star Trek IV. Uh, she provided the voices for several characters in the animated series. She was also the voice of all Federation Starship computers in the original series TNG, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, and most of the movies. And then she returned again in two episodes of Star Trek Enterprise. Uh, in Next Generation, the... Um Ferengis were depicted slightly different than they were in uh, Deep Space Nine. In Next Generation, they were more like uh, very barbaric pirates. Uh, in Next Generation... The um, Ferengis were depicted slightly different than they were in uh, Deep Space Nine. In Next Generation, they were more like uh, very barbaric pirates. I mean, in Next Generation, they were uh, very barbaric uh, 
pirates, kind of. In Deep Space Nine, they were more or less crooked businessmen. I'm not too sure how I feel about the uh, Star, Star Trek Discovery that's coming out. Uh, the changes with the Klingons that were made... Um, it actually seems like it would probably be more than likely a prequel to the Kelvinverse Star Trek uh, movie franchise as opposed to the standard Star Trek continuity. And I don't know if I care for that or not. The TV shows should remain in the standard continuity. I'm sure it'll be a good show, but as for being a Star Trek, sh good Star Trek show, I, I highly doubt it. There's a certain reason why people prefer Star Trek to Star Wars. It's more philosophical as opposed to action pack. Um, and when you bring all that action into the Star Star Trek franchise, like with the Kelvinverse, uh, you tend to alienate fans who really enjoyed the more philosophical part of Star Trek. Uh, also, if you noticed, uh, something... With the Star Trek Discovery, they made the Klingons completely bald and more of a navy blue skin. In the TNG timeline, if you notice, their ears are always covered. They did show their ears during the original series timeline. But as explained in, I believe it was... Enterprise, maybe? Those Klingons were altered. Uh, very similar to Khan. It was a very dark time in Klingon history, according to Worf. Which is why they also didn't have the ridges on their heads. So we don't actually know what the ears of a true Klingon look like, because they're always covered. You can look back through uh, TNG, uh, Voyager, Deep Space Nine, and Enterprise. Actually, I don't think Klingons were part of Enterprise, were they? I don't think so. I could be wrong. They may have made a, uh, an appearance or two, but they never actually showed their ears. It was always covered by a long mane of hair. Begs the question... What do Klingon ears look like? Would they be pointy like Vulcans? Or would they be rounded like humans? Or would they just be holes in the head? We may never know. We're about halfway through the deck now. Sarak. I always liked trading cards. I was a big collector of trading cards back in the day. I had just binders full of trading cards. I think I collected more trading cards than I did comic books, really. Because they were so cheap to get. Um, more fun to collect, really, because you, you really had to hunt them down. You could walk out of the store with an entire box of trading cards for the price that uh, maybe five or six comics cost. So Especially during the 90s when the price of comics started going up quite a bit. In fact, I think I may 
get back into uh, purchasing trading cards. If you guys like these kind of episodes, let me know in the comments below. And I will do my best to get more trading cards. Maybe not necessarily of just Star Trek. Maybe some Spawn. Maybe some Spider-Man. Uh, Marvel trading cards, whatnot, and go from there. As I did say, I do have other, more cards to go through, show you guys, um, from the original series mainly. And I got a few from Voyager, but I don't have anywhere near... A full set probably not even a quarter of a set really probably uh, maybe just one or two packs <laughs> that moment Worf discovers he has a son Also wonder what a uh, Cardassian Klingon hybrid might look like. That would be uh, interesting. Two battle-ready races. Battle-ready races. One which uh, fights for honor. The other which fights to conquer and enslave. Very interesting to say the least. I believe this was the uh, episode where at the end. Q leaves the Enterprise, but leaves Data a little gift. The gift of laughter. <laughs> the battle section of the Enterprise. As I said before, the ship's computer is voiced by Maja... I may be saying this wrong. Maja Barrett Roddenberry. Gene Roddenberry's second wife. I believe they met shortly before Star Trek, working on Star Trek, the original series. Um, she was set to be the first officer to Pike. But NBC threw a fit because they didn't want the series creator's girlfriend to be a lead character on the show for, well, number one, legal reasons in case the relationship never worked out. But also, it's just unheard of to have a female lead character at that time. Uh, something else I liked about cards was if you didn't have the money to purchase the multiple Star Trek encyclopedias that they had, such as the ship's manual and all that other stuff, they have the same information on trading cards, uh, just more condensed. Uh, one, one of these days I do plan on investing in some of the... Uh, Starfleet technical man manuals and the uh, Star Trek encyclopedias. Eventually. Maybe if I'm a good boy, I'll get one for Christmas. <laughs> Riker and Troy, a tale as old as time.
Riker's got that, uh, oh man, can this meeting hurry up? I gotta take a huge dump look on his face. Oh man, can this meeting hurry up? I gotta take a huge dump look on his face. I'm going to try and keep uh, Wednesdays, maybe have Wednesdays being Star Trek Day here in Comageddon. After I get done filming this, I've got to record the audio for my Star Trek Q Gambit issue number two review. And that'll probably get uploaded first as it'll take the least amount of time to uh, edit. This one, we're already at 32 minutes into the video, so I'm going to have to edit it down quite a bit. Maybe make the cards magically change in my hands. <laughs> Cut out a little bit of time. Do you guys like the longer videos, or do you prefer the shorter ones? Here lately I've been trying to keep videos anywhere between 3 to 10 minutes long. Which I've found is kind of the sweet spot, really. But a lot of other creators get plenty of views with longer videos. So if you want to see longer videos, let me know in the comments. And uh, I'll try to make it happen. What do you guys think? Do you think uh, the Borg came from V'ger in Star Trek The Motion Picture? Uh, perhaps V'ger somehow went back in time at some point and created the Borg in the uh, Delta Quadrant. According to I think it was Voyager... Or maybe it was Next Generation. I'm not sure. But as of that point, they were a few thousand years old. And I think there was like a hundred years or something like that that spanned between the original series and uh, Next Generation. Which is why Bones, Dr. McCoy, looks so incredibly ancient in the first episode of TNG. Of course, by then, with medical science being the way it is, of course they would have found a way of expanding, uh, expanding a person's life. If they didn't die in battle... And they didn't have some disease that medical science has yet to find a cure for. Um, they could have quite possibly increased a person's lifespan. The second to the last card in this deck. Right before Tasha Yar is killed. The actress would go on to make other appearances in Star Trek, most notably as Tasha's illegitimate Romulan daughter, and also as an alternate reality version of Tasha as well. So there you have it, guys. That completes what I currently have in this set of the Star Trek 25th Anniversary, Next Generation, 1991 Impel Trading Cards. Tune in next Wednesday for more Star Trek videos. Take care, guys.
Hey guys, if you like this video, make sure you smash that subscribe button and click on the little bell to receive notifications on all our upcoming videos. Hit the like button, make sure and leave us a comment so we know how you felt about this video. And don't forget to share with your family and friends. Until next time, I'm Shannon for Comic Again, where all geek culture collides.